This video is all about spark plugs and if you watch it to the end you'll know practically everything you'll ever need to know about spark plugs not just for a classic Mercedes like this one but for any car. There are so many myths and misinformation and misunderstandings about spark plugs that I'm going to hopefully put that right but we're going to start off by setting a small quiz consisting of five questions. Okay, so let's get started. Most of us know that the primary function of a spark plug is to ignite the air-fuel mixture in the combustion chamber, but what's the other main purpose of a spark plug? Is it to stop oil escaping from the cylinder head? Is it to seal in the exhaust gases? Or is it to draw heat from the combustion chamber away from the cylinder head? Or is it all of the above, or none of the above? Upgrading to a hot type spark plug could improve the performance of your car, lead to greater fuel efficiency, improve the life of the spark plug, give you a hotter spark and decrease carbon deposit fouling, or none of the above. Which of the following is true? Solid copper electrodes conduct heat better and do not overheat. Electrodes made from iridium can last up to 100,000 miles. All spark plugs have a copper core. Platinum electrodes have a higher melting point than iridium, but are softer. All of the above. Which of the following is not true? NGK spark plugs bought online are sometimes forgeries. Some Bosch spark plugs are only available new from Mercedes. For NGK spark plugs, the lower the heat range, the hotter the plug. For Bosch spark plugs, the higher the heat range, number the hotter the plug. NGK spark plugs are always cheaper and more reliable than Bosch. Which of the following is incorrect? The correct torque setting is crucial for a spark plug to dissipate heat and perform properly. You should always use a small dab of anti-seize when installing spark plugs. Spark plugs are installed dry at the factory with no lubricant or anti-seize. Anti-seize can act as a lubricant, altering torque settings by up to 20%. The finish on spark plug threads acts as a release agent during removal and is designed to provide corrosion resistance against moisture and chemicals. Now here's a bonus question for anyone lucky enough to own a classic Mercedes or perhaps a mechanic specialising in Mercedes. Which spark plug is recommended to use in an early, that's up to 1985 Mercedes R107 SL? Is it the Bosch WR7 DCO? Is it the NGK BP6 ES? Or you can use the Bosch W7 DCO. Is it the NGK BP6 ES? Or you can use an NGK BP5 ES. Is it the Bosch WR7 DCO? or the Bosch W7 DCO, or you can use any of the above. So let's go over the answers to these questions. And as we do so, I hope that you'll learn as much about spark plugs as I did when I was researching this. The answer to this first question is C, the spark plug is designed to draw heat from the combustion chamber away from the cylinder head. And that's why every spark plug has a heat rating on it, which is a number stamped on the side of the plug. Now we'll be talking a little bit more about that, but the only thing that should be in your combustion chamber is air and fuel. You shouldn't have any oil in there. And whilst the spark plug does indeed seal in exhaust gases, that's not its primary purpose. This second question is designed to dispel a very common myth. Some people think or tell you that by upgrading the spark plugs or changing the spark plugs in your perfectly set up car, you might be able to improve the performance of your car. You might even be able to get greater fuel efficiency, neither of which is correct. If there was a spark plug that could do either of those two things, the manufacturer of the car would put that, car, that spark plug in their car to start off with. The life of the spark plug doesn't have anything to do with the heat rating. It has to do with the materials like copper, platinum and iridium that the spark plug is made from. And upgrading to a hot spark plug, the hot spark plug has nothing to do with the temperature of the spark. It's to do with the spark plug's ability to remove heat from the combustion chamber. Uh, so the answer to this is none of the above. So what exactly do we mean by the heat range of a spark plug? If you imagine that 100% of the heat that's generated in the combustion chamber when that spark plug fires and the air-fuel mixture ignites, almost two-thirds of it, well, 60% of it, is dissipated through the threaded section of the spark plug, and then you'll get some of it dissipated through the ceramics and a little bit of it staying in the combustion chamber. 
The heat rating of a spark plug is determined by the shape of the electrode, which is generally hidden behind the threaded section here. So you can't tell anything about the heat range of a spark plug just by looking at it. You need to look at the number. And for example, on these two spark plugs, this is an NGK5 and this is an NGK6. Now this is a hotter spark plug than this spark plug. And that one difference in range is equivalent to about 70 to 800 degrees temperature. So on average, a combustion chamber should be running at about 850 degrees. That's the optimum temperature inside a combustion chamber. Going from a six spark plug to a five spark plug is a difference of about 70 to 100 degrees. The shape of the electrode here determines whether it's called a hot type or low heat range, or a cool type high heat range. So for example, the, much of this spark plug here is actually embedded in the cylinder head. And that means that much of the heat will be dissipated by the spark plug, leaving the tip colder. If you run a spark plug in your car that's too cold, what will happen is it won't get hot enough to burn off the carbon deposits from the combustion inside the chamber. And of course, the combustion inside that chamber, the heat of that combustion depends on the whether you're running a lean mixture or a rich mixture, the temperature, running temperature of the engine. It depends on all sorts of things, which is why the spark plug is very specific to the engine. But if you put a colder spark plug in there, this tip here may not be hot enough to blow off the carbon deposits and after a while you'll start to get rough running misfires etc as this fouls up. If you put a spark plug in that's too hot what you may happen see happening is that this bit here starts to glow red hot and imagine if you put a red hot piece of iron in a um, cloud of petrol fumes, you could ignite that cloud of petrol fumes. And the same thing happens in a combustion chamber of a car. If that gets too hot, it can pre-ignite the air fuel mixture and cause the explosion in the cylinder before when the cylinder is at the wrong place. And if that happens, pre-ignition can seriously and permanently damage your engine. So. If at all um, unsure of what plug you should have in your car, you should err on the side of caution and run a cold type spark plug. Now, this is a bit of a trick question and the answer is C, all spark plugs have a copper core. So whether you have a platinum spark plug or an iridium spark plug, they'll all have a copper core and the copper core dissipates heat within the electrode and makes the spark plug last longer. Um, solid copper electrodes conduct heat better and do not overheat. It's a little bit of a misnomer to say copper spark plugs because the electrodes are always made out of a hard material, normally a nickel, nickel alloy. Um, you, won't, you don't have copper electrodes because they have a melting point of about 1085 degrees and the temperatures inside at the tip of a spark plug can get much hotter than that. So if you had a copper electrode, it would simply melt. The melting point of platinum is about 1700 degrees and that of iridium 2400. So... <clears throat> Electrodes made from iridium can last up to 100,000 miles. Well, electrodes made from platinum can last up to 100,000 miles and electrodes made from iridium, which is more expensive and a harder metal, can last up to 200,000 miles. And what some manufacturers will do is they will use iridium spark plugs if the spark plugs are located in a place that are not is not easy to get to. So if you have to take the exhaust manifold off or half the engine to pieces on some of the modern cars, then you'll see iridium spark plugs used. Platinum electrodes have a higher melting point than iridium, but are softer. Um, iridium have the highest melting point and also the hardest, and then comes platinum and then comes copper. And in terms of price, copper is the cheapest, then platinum and then iridium. Iridium can cost two or three times more than the platinum spark plug and the platinum spark plug two or three times more than the copper one. So which one of these is not true? The answer is, NGK spark plugs are always cheaper and more reliable than Bosch. There's a whole host of people out there that have used NGK spark plugs all their life and swear by them, but the long and the short of it is both NGK and Bosch spark plugs are both excellent. Sometimes you'll have failures and sometimes some plugs will last longer than the others. But 
One thing to be aware of is that NGK spark plugs, some of them that you buy online, especially the more expensive platinum ones, will be forgeries. And it's very difficult to tell whether you're buying a forged spark plug if you're buying from eBay or Amazon. You need to get your spark plugs either from a reputable um, garage like Audi, Mercedes or um, a reputable retailer rather than from eBay or Amazon because you may end up with a forgery. Some Bosch spark plugs are only available from Mercedes. That is true. So for example, the spark plug that's recommended for the um, Mercedes R107 is only available from Mercedes. You might occasionally find new old stock on eBay, but you cannot go into a retailer and buy those spark plugs from anyone else. For NGK spark plugs, the lower the heat range, the hotter the plug. Um, that is true. So a NGK5 spark plug is hotter than the NGK6 spark plug. For Bosch, it's the other way around. As those numbers go up, the spark plug's heat range goes up. So it's important to realize that for some spark plug brands, heat range goes down, for others, it goes up. The answer to this question is B. You should always use a damp of anti-seize when installing spark plugs. That is not correct. These days, modern day spark plugs are indeed um, installed dry at the factory with no lubricant or anti-seize and the trouble with putting anti-seize on it can act as a lubricant and when you're talking up to 20 or 22 newton meters you're actually going to be talking much much um, higher than that or up to 20 percent higher than that and you run the risk of stripping the threads so anti-seize if you're going to put any on so i know some people do you should put hardly any on at all but it's not recommended to put any on for the simple reason that these days the actual finish on the spark plugs acts as an anti-seize and acts as an anti-corrosion resistant resistor so one thing that is important is that you talk down these spark plugs to the correct setting because if the spark plugs are loose in there or not pressed down properly they won't dissipate heat properly according to their heat rating now, before you go out and shoot the messenger on this question, this says what's the recommended spark plug. Some people out there may say, I've been running an NGK BP5 for 20 years and it hasn't done any damage to my car. The recommended spark plug is this one here and the NGK equivalent of that is this one here. So if your spark plug has an R in it, like WR7, it means it's got a resistor in it. And the idea of the resistor is to reduce the electrical interference. If you've got a modern engine, say running ECUs, electronic um, fuel injection systems, GPS units, etc. But the um, other thing that the resistor inside a spark plug does, it significantly reduces the voltage of the spark. So, for example, this spark plug here might have a tip voltage, a peak tip voltage of 30,000 volts, whereas the resistor version of this spark plug would have a tip voltage, peak tip voltage of about 10,000 volts, which is quite a difference. Now, the difference in that voltage potentially means that if you put a resistor spark plug in an engine that's not designed for it, then you may get a misfire or hesitation or a rough idle. Just before we finish this video with some charts on how to actually decode spark plugs, I'm just gonna to touch on whether or not you should gap your spark plugs or check the gap before installing them. The Bosch spark plug come with one over 32 inch gap as standard and it's not recommended to change that. If you do change the gap by bending down this tip here, what you should use is a tool that just bends down this tip and does not touch the electrode at all. But if you change the gap on your spark plug, you're effectively changing the timing because you may change the time at which the um, the plug actually fires so it's not recommended to change the gap on a Bosch spark plug or indeed an NGK spark plug they are pre-gapped at the factory you might want to check that gap but as I say it's not recommended to change it now if you're in the slightest bit interested in knowing how to decode a Bosch spark plug here's a handy little chart so this spark plug here which is the correct spark plug for a, an early R107 Mercedes is called W7DCO. And what does that mean? The W means that the size of the threads, the thickness of the threads here is basically an M14 with a 1.25 pitched thread. So that's a fine pitched thread. You can't, you couldn't put a standard M14 bolt in a spark plug hole, for example. And also it tells you here the hex size or the socket size you'll need to take the spark plug out is 21 mil. 
and there's no X in this column, which means that the threads are not tapered. They are parallel all the way through. So that W tells you four separate things about this spark plug. The next column you can ignore. If you had any letters after the W, like an R, for example, that would be an interference suppression resistor. But as I say, for this spark plug, you can ignore. The number always refers to the heat range setting on a Bosch spark plug. The spark plug, the higher that number, the hotter the spark plug, where somewhere in the middle here. The thread length is important on this spark plug. It's a D, which means it's 19 millimeters. And that means these threads here are 19 millimeters long. It is possible to go into some auto stores and for them to have the wrong um, lengths on their system. So, for example, if you went in and bought a 25 mil um, long spark plug when it should be 19 mil, what you'd find is the top of the piston is hitting the spark plug and you'd seriously damage your engine. And seriously, if the threads weren't long enough, the spark plug would be firing in, a, in the wrong place and not causing combustion at the right time. The number of electrodes you can ignore on this. The um, C on the in this uh, spark plug means it's a standard spark plug, copper spark plug they're called, although the electrodes are not actually made from copper, they're made from a nickel alloy. If it had a P or an S in that title, it would mean, um, sorry, a P or an I, it would mean a platinum or a platinum iridium spark plug. And finally, the zero at the end there just means it's a standard design. And just in case you're in the slightest bit interested, the BP6ES, which is the correct spark plug for the R107, the B here means it's 14 mil, i.e. M14. It doesn't tell you anything about the pitch, incidentally. The P, it's a projecting, projecting insulator type. Some of those um, electrodes there are hidden. This is a projecting type. The heat range here is a six, slap bang in the middle, and the E means it's 19 millimeters long. That's the length of the thread. And the S down here at the bottom is a standard type 2.5mm centre electrode.